welcome. My name is Brad Prather. I'm with DWD Technology Group. And today I'm going to show you how to email your sales order invoices directly from Sage 100 using the paperless office functionality. The first step in the process is to go to the library master module, go into the main folder, company maintenance, and select the company that you want to email the invoices from. Then want to go to the email tab, and from here you'll probably want to work with your IT department to get the information here for your mail server. You'll need things such as the address, that might either be a name or an IP address, a port that's open on that email service that allows mail to be relayed. You want to check with them as well as what kind of SMTP encryption uh, is needed, if any. And you'll want to have a username and password to authenticate on your email server. One quick recommendation that you create a username and password specifically for this purpose, as opposed to using an existing uh, user name and password on the system. And the reason for that is most companies now have their security set up to force users to change their passwords on a regular basis. And if you use a regular user, and that password gets changed, uh, the next time you try to send invoices, you'll get error messages that it can't connect to the server. So recommend that you create one specifically for this use. Once you have that information, you'll want to do a test. Uh, use that email address that you're authenticating from as you're from. Test can be a Sage 100 test email, and then in your two email addresses, Again, I will recommend that you use an internal email address and an external email address. Uh, as many IT companies, IT support have set up uh, their email server to limit or even uh, prohibit sending to outside email addresses unless specific security things have been set up. So I would test both to make sure that they both work. Once you have that set up, you're going to go to the paperless office module, you're going to go into the setup, your paperless office options, and you'll want to make sure that the forms box is checked right here. Again, I recommend that you use all of the functionality included in paperless office, but for today's video, you'll want to verify the forms box has been checked. After you've done that, we're going to go to the option for form maintenance. And here's where we're going to tell Sage 100 uh, where the document is being sent from and where we would like to store it. You can do this by company, by module. We recommend that you just do all companies, all modules, as there's really no reason to separate them at the file level. The viewer within Sage 100 will allow you to pick and choose the forms, reports, et cetera, that you want to use. And it makes it much easier when it comes time to upgrade or if you are changing servers to just move and relink to a single folder as opposed to multiple folders. So mine is set up for all companies, all modules. You want to make sure that the enable electronic delivery box is checked. If you were going to do four separate, in this case, you would have sales order and the document would be the invoice. Still enable electronic delivery. The email address you want that email to appear from. Uh, again, in a lot of cases, uh, these come from uh, email addresses such as accounts receivable at or customer service at kind of email addresses. You want to choose a folder out on the network where you are storing these documents. We recommend that you put them in the same SharePoint as your Sage 100. In this case, it's a folder called Sage, but that you do not put this directory in with a uh, specific MAS90 directory or even a particular version number such as I have done. And the reason I've done it is because I have multiple versions on my laptop and therefore I do want to stay store it with that version. Uh, we recommend again that you would put it in just this SharePoint folder here. And you will have to enter an override password. And that is a password that you can give 
to your customer if they have requested their documents be password protected. I'll show you in just a minute where that information goes, but if they request it be password protected, and then the person who knows that password leaves or they forget that password, this override is the one that you can give them that will open that document on their end. I suggest that you make it uh, something that uh, you can remember, or definitely, hopefully, in a password manager, you can get that written down and saved. So that's my form maintenance. The next step is to then go into the electronic delivery message maintenance. And this is where I set up the message I want to be included in the email when I send this sales order invoice. Again, I can set this up for an individual company or for maintenance purposes, ease of maintenance. If you can do it for all companies, uh, I recommend that you do that. So that's what I've done here, my sales order invoice. My subject line, as you can see, is attached is the document, and that's a merge field that can be selected right over here to add to this message maintenance. And that's going to say invoice for the bill to name dated with the invoice date on it. So that's the subject line that your customer is going to see. And then we've got some words down here. I want to thank them. Uh, and I've used a couple other merge fields down here again with the document number and the document date. And there are additional merge fields up here that you can use uh, simply by double clicking on them. They will appear down here in the body of the email and then you can move them around as necessary. So this is the message that your customer is gonna see when they receive their invoice. The next step then is to go into the accounts receivable module. And we're going to go into customer maintenance. And I'm going to select my first customer here. And just for FYI purposes, you'll notice I do have an email address in here. And that you'll see in a minute where that will pop up. But you're going to go into the paperless button here. Click on it. You're going to insert the form that you want to select. In this case, it's the SO invoice. Make sure that the email box is checked. This is where you would enter a customer password if they have requested that their documents be password protected. You would enter that information in here that they give you. And then you're gonna to go to the email tab. Here I have multiple options and I can select any or all of them. So I can use the email address that's in data entry. So if I change that in data entry and then this box is checked, that's the one that will be used. I can use the customer email address, which we'll notice is the one that defaulted from the header tab, or I should say the main tab in customer maintenance. I can choose from any of the contact codes out there. Again, I can choose multiple contact codes, as many as I like. Or I can simply type in additional email addresses. And what we find that is used primarily is for copies of email. So if you would like to send a copy of this invoice, for example, to the salesperson responsible for this customer, that's a great place to type in that email address and then your salesperson will be notified of that invoice. Okay. And so you're going to do that setup for all of your customers. And then the final step is during the sales order invoice printing. When I go in there, I want to make sure that I select the pr appropriate paperless office output option, which you'll now see in the middle of your screen here. Recommend that you select the print PDF or electronically deliver, and that will print any of the invoices that are not set up to be delivered electronically and it will electronically deliver the invoices for the customers who want them that way, and it will generate a PDF of all of the invoices. So now, instead of having to file invoice in a filing cabinet, you will have a copy of it, it's a PDF format, that you can go back into the paperless office viewer and select to view or resend. Once I click on print, it'll connect to your email server, you'll see some messages flashing across that it's connecting, and then you'll get a message at the end that 
X number of emails out of X number were sent successfully. That's how you configure Sage 100 to electronically deliver your sales order invoices. I hope you found this video to be helpful. Again, my name is Brad Prather with DWD Technology Group, and I thank you very much for watching this video.